Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing a deck tech on the mono white beatdown deck in Alchemy. This is kind of a first draft of it. The mono white archetype was really good in the actual standard format, but now with Alchemy kind of taking over, we got some new toys and a couple of cool new exciting cards for mono white. So we're going to hop over those first. But basically, the goal of the deck is just like it kind of was in the standard one. It's to kind of put pressure on the board early, build up that presence, and snowball and take over the game. And there's a few new tools to do that. We're going to start from what is the most exciting tool first. Kind of. So the way Inquisitor Captain works is you'll be able to search it up like we just mentioned with the cards. So it's going to show you two cards, and you'll pick one of them with mana value three or less and put it into play. So every card in our deck except for Inquisitor Captain actually will be able to be put into play. You have to do some perpetual nonsense if you want to chain Inquisitor Captains or just maybe something we'll try on the channel. But basically we can put any card or deck into play. Uh, it will give us two choices so it's not like you get to pick it. But often that's quite strong. We have a gluttony of three drops. Let's go over those three drops right now. Kind of because they're super important to the deck. The three cards you can hit off it that are just one are Brutal Cathar which has been a standard staple since it's entered the format, just a nice little removal spell, something that's kind of great to have off a card like this. Uh, Elite Spellbinder is sort of a similar thing, but really messing up your opponent's hand while also being a flyer, which is super pivotal in these stacks. Quite often the ground gets clogged up, and this flyer just lets you hit them for a little bit, kind of break that board saw, so super important. And Adelaine, wow, this card is super impressed ever since it dropped in Midnight Hunt about three months ago now, and it just completely takes over the game. If the board stall, Adeline breaks through those board stalls constantly, just a super, super card. Another new card that this deck got is a little bit higher variance, even than the last card we talked about, but I think it's super cool and it's worth trying out and experimenting with. It is really strong when you're on the play, and that's Captain Herberheart. It's one white legendary creature, human soldier, double strike, one, one. Spells cast from among cards you drew this turn cost one less to cast, and spells cast from among cards your opponent drew this turn cost one more to cast. So what this card does is it actually makes it so when you play this on curve, if you have a third land, every creature or every spell in our deck you can actually play. So this will allow you, if you get very lucky and you top deck an Inquisitor Captain, you can play that on turn three, but you might open up some double spell situations where you draw one of our other two drops, like maybe a Luminar Casper or something like that. It obviously doesn't always do something, but I think a 1-1 one, one double strike for two that we can buff up in our deck is a pretty reasonable adjacent body, and the fact it can throw off the opponent's curve and make their draw steps much worse and clunkier... I think is actually something that is worth experimenting with. This sort of card hasn't really existed before. We've had things adjacent to it, and they've been quite strong. Like, for example, Thalia is a card that does this for all non-creature spells, right? That the opponent half. And we know that card's very strong. So I want to try this card. I think it might have a real shot at being something in these sort of decks. It might end up being a little too meme -y. So if you're looking at this deck tech and you have everything but this card and you're low on Mythic Rare Wild Cards, maybe skip it for now and put something else in the deck. But I do think this card has a real chance of being home, and hopefully in the gameplay videos you'll see that as well. The next card is the Faithful Disciple, which is a very interesting card. So because of our restraints with the deck, we can't have too many non-creature spells in it because we need to make sure we have a bunch of creatures. So this card, when it dies, you get to draft a card from a spell book, which means there'll be three cards popped up and you'll take one of three, and it's random. So I'm going to slowly kind of click through here while I talk about it. but. Essentially, this card has a really high fluctuation on how good it's going to be in our deck. There are about six things you want to actively hit, from Banishing Light to a Crusade to Duelist Heritage like we just saw here on screen uh, to Glorious Anthems. There's just a couple things that are actually quite good. Angelic Gift's like a fine card, and if you have a couple of them die, they actually work pretty well. So. Really, it's just a body that gives us access to some more spells. It might end up getting outmoded by some other cards, but I think it's really worth trying these sort of cards early on. Finally, the last new card for this deck is uh, Sigardian Evangel. This card's kind of weird. So when it enters the battlefield, it will create a copy of itself. It will conjure one to your hand, and then it will tap another permanent you don't control. So essentially, and then at the end of the turn, you discard all the Sigardian Evangels in your hand. So essentially what it says is one in a white, three one, tap something your opponent controls, and then you may cast this card again this turn. There are ways you could abuse this with looting and stuff, but we don't have any of that in our deck. The Sigurdian Evangel is just a way to actually just put a bunch of bodies in play off one card as a way to refill or to break a board stall. I think one of the things that's really interesting about this card 
is that if you're kind of stalling out in a mirror or against a green deck, you can play this card and it will actually kind of pave the way for maybe something like an Adelaine to actually start hitting in and maybe swing the tide of the race while also just producing a bunch more buys on the board so it's hard for them to crack super hard back at you. That's going to do it for the main deck. Those are the new cards. Like I said, it's very much like the standard counterpart when it comes to what it's trying to accomplish. We're trying to gum up the board and take over the game. The sideboard is a little interesting. Alchemy is very new, and so figuring out exactly what we need to beat is something that is going to take a little bit of time. But for right now, we're kind of just having some removal spells in the form of Faithful Absence, and portable hole as a way to kind of answer aggressive decks we've seen things like jund werewolves or green red werewolves really take over the metagame currently and they're being very popular in these early early days we have more hopeful initiates for some of the more enchantment based stuff we have curse of silence because some people just won't give up on uh, blue red so for right now this is kind of the plan we're trying to figure out a better one and then we have redain for the people who are playing those big spell decks and Honestly, the mono green deck looks to be pretty good, and Redane does a great job stomping on that. And then finally, we have two Guardian of Faiths hiding out here at the bottom of the deck list. If you want to get this whole deck list exportable, it is in the description below. Guardian of Faith is a great way to kind of stop the Doom Scars, which are popping up a bit more. Doom Scars stock has kind of gone up a little bit. It's unclear how great it's going to be as time goes on, but for right now, it's really doing a great job. So that's it for this deck. Make sure to stick around and watch the rest of the gameplay for this. And if you like the deck list, you can go down in the description below, grab the deck list, it's exportable. You can hop on Arena and start playing. And make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the matches.